Hey, Aaron, welcome. What an amazing start to DevNet Create 2021. I was so excited to see all of that uh, that we just covered in the keynote. Um, I wanna just talk a little bit about some of what we saw because I really was excited to hear uh, some of what Grace shared with us. First, it was great to meet her. I know for a lot of you, this is your first time meeting Grace and it was so awesome to have her as part of this community now and helping us guide where we go forward in, the, in this organization. Uh, but we also talked a lot about what was accomplished over the past year, and it was so awesome seeing all of that work you've all been doing, taking these skills we've been talking about for years and putting them into action to help change things for good. Driving tech for good is one of the common themes you're going to hear across the entire event this week. Uh, so it was great to hear some specific examples of things you did to help your communities and people around the globe. Uh, it was also great hearing some of the future technology stuff that's coming out. Uh, some of the, uh, I'm a security geek at heart, so things like API security are really near and dear to me. It's the intersection of my, my career-wide focus on security and my uh, time spent in software development. So hearing uh, from Carlos about what we're doing in that space and some of the innovation that we're driving was really great to hear. And I'm looking forward to more sessions throughout the week that are gonna cover that as well. But then also hearing about things like full stack observability, which you've probably started hearing out in the market, but put a little finer point on what exactly it means to you and why as a developer you should care about it. So it is great to have all of that content come together. And then lastly, but definitely not least, uh, we've been working since 2019, since we launched the initial DevNet certs. And it is so excited to see all of that work come together uh, when they announce the actual launch of the DevNet expert certification. So I'm so excited. There is another session coming up shortly where you'll be able to hear more about it. But that is such, such a great recognition of all of that this community does. It's a way to now show that and formalize it in the form of a certification. So I hope you stay tuned after this session to hear more about that and hear what's in store for you if you do want to pursue that. So next up, uh, you know, for those of you who haven't met me, I am Eric Thiel. I lead developer experience for Cisco. And this is now my fifth DevNet Create. I was, I've been at every single one of them now. And this is such an honor to be able to sit here and see all the progression we've made. You know, we started out as a very small community uh, local event and to be able to reach the whole globe now. And last year was our first virtual event. This year we decided it was so successful, we brought it back again. And being able to follow the sun and reach you all and make sure you can all actually attend and view the content that you're interested in live including hearing a lot of regional content that might be relevant to you and your geography. It's just so great to be able to be a part of this. And for the first time, I actually get to host uh, my favorite section, which is the recognition and the demo jam. So in this area next, we're gonna talk about some of the cool things you've all built. We're gonna show you and let you show your work and what you've done. And then we're gonna recognize some of the members of the community that have been out there and helping grow the community help develop those skills in people and help them understand how they can grow their career, uh, grow their own personal skills, and then also turn around and give back. So we've had people that have attended, received some of that training, and then turned around and started giving it back as well to the community. So it's so awesome to be able to recognize everyone uh, as part of both of those segments. And I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and jump straight into this year's Demo Jam. Welcome to the America's Demo Jam. It is so great to be able to go around the globe this year and show you some regional demos that were put together by people looking to innovate, looking to build cool things, and that they wanted to share with the community. There are so many awesome ideas we've seen out there, so we appreciate everyone that submitted your ideas. If you weren't highlighted as part of this event, please do keep sharing them. Post them out on Twitter, post them out on GitHub. Make sure that the community can see all these cool, innovative ideas that you have and what you're doing with technology to try and break down boundaries or test out new things. The first demo I wanna actually show you today is from Eric Pilko, and he was approaching a problem at home with it. When we all went to virtual work, he had to struggle with some of his environment, environmental issues. And I know that's things that I've struggled with and we've all struggled with. How do we actually fit within our house and find the right way to be successful, have meaningful interactions via video without some of the distractions around the house? And so he was struggling with that, and he really asked him some, himself the question, uh, after building some automations, am I lazy or am I just smart? So let's hear from him and try and see if you can judge, is he lazy or is he just smart? Eric, let's see the video. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching my session today. Am I lazy or efficient? Using APIs to make your life easier. 
I'm Eric Pilko, the leader of systems engineering for the Upstate New York public sector team here at Cisco. I graduated from Rochester Institute of Technology with a master's degree in computer science. That degree made me realize I never wanted to write code for a living, but it has certainly come in handy lately. I wanted to do a quick session on whether I'm lazy or efficient. I like to do many different things that keep me pretty busy and occupied. One way I'm able to do that is by automating simple yet repetitive tasks. Who wouldn't want to do that? This little project started at the beginning of the pandemic. The only place I could set up a home office was in my basement. Basements are great in the summer because they stay cooler than the rest of the house. The downside is that in the winter, they are also cooler than the rest of the house. I decided to reuse my noisy 31-year-old space heater to keep my home office warm. I kept it under the desk by my feet. Because the heater was so noisy, it had to be off during all my calls. The problem I had was that sometimes I forgot to turn the heater off when a call came in. I would then have to have this awkward moment where I had to disappear under my desk, turn the heater off, and I would pop back into view. Sometimes I forgot to turn the heater back on because my feet were freezing. So I automated that process. And then I orchestrated it. I think it's a great example of efficiency. The first thing I had to do was round up some hardware. I had the heater, I had a Raspberry Pi. I used that to run Nginx, Flask, and Python. I also had a WebEx endpoint. The only thing I needed was a plug that had network capabilities and an API. I selected the Casa HS105 and it has worked out great. The next thing I did was create a button on the WebEx board with the UI extensions web interface. This is what the exported XML looks like for the toggle heater button. The important piece of information here is the panel ID, CASA. The WebEx board passes that information to a macro that I wrote. After I created that button, the macro that I wrote for the board would send a message to the Pi when the toggle heater button was pressed. I wrote a few lines of JavaScript for that, and it looks for the CASA panel event, and then the board sends a message to the Pi. I did that through the send message function I wrote to add all the appropriate HTML headers for that message. The hard part was on the Pi. I was already using Nginx for some other web services I was hosting, so I just had to create a location to proxy requests to my Flask app. The app basically checked the power state of the plug and then flipped it. This worked out great. Just like when I forgot to manually turn the heater on and off, I also sometimes forgot to turn the heater on and off with the button. That's why I needed some orchestration. I looked at the WebEx APIs and found that I could send X feedback events for calls. I added a little code in the macro to forward those messages to the Pi. When a call was answered, the heater would turn off. When a call ended, the heater turned on. That was fantastic unless the heater was off at the beginning of a call or it turned, I turned it on in the middle of a call because my feet got cold. The best place to keep track of the heater state was on the Pi. I added some variables to keep track of the plug state and call status. With that little bit of extra logic, I could make sure the heater returned or stayed at the correct power state. Life was grand. I was so efficient or lazy that I didn't have to touch anything to control the heater when I was on a call. The last thing that happened was that I had to undo all that orchestration. With another kid off to college, I was able to move my home office to a warmer room. Also, Cisco acquired Babel Labs, and the AI in there was able to remove all the sounds from that noisy heater. I now toggle the heater whenever I want without negatively impacting the audio in any of my calls. Thank you. All right, next up in the demo jam, we have an awesome demo from Jairo and Louise. Uh, they were looking at how can I actually change the interface to a device? So pick any device that you have that has an API. You might not actually like interacting with it in the way that it's designed. Maybe there's a custom way you want to be able to interface with it that fits your workflow better, and you don't want to have to necessarily go through the way it was designed. So they actually are going to show you how you can customize the interface into any device of your choosing and build your own front end uh, to fit exactly your workflow and how you want to utilize it. So why don't we go ahead and show that video? Welcome to our demo jam, building custom UIs using Django Web, Frame, uh, web Framework. My name is Jairo Leon, Customer Delivery Architect in Cisco Systems. I have been in Cisco for 12 years. With me is Luis Rueda today, who is going to present the demo. And having said that, Luis, please take it away and introduce yourself. Thank you, Jairo. As you mentioned, my name is Luis Rueda. I'm a senior software architect with Cisco. I've been with Cisco for more than 14 years and for more than 20 in the industry as a, as a solution architect. What you'll see now is a video of a Django application using uh, used for web UI. In this video, we will be demoing an application built in Django that uses a view in order to query the status of the different interfaces in a CSR 1KB that we have in the backend. What we have is Python code, which uses requests in order to query via RESTConf the list of interfaces and return a dictionary that contains all the different interfaces and their statuses. 
If we look at the application by going here into this web page, we'll see that this dictionary is then converted into a table and using this UI allows us to enable or disable the different interfaces. We have this action button, but this, now this could be for enabling interfaces, what we have created, but it could be for anything. We could change the description, we could um, create new interfaces, anything is possible that, that is available via the RESConf interface for the CSR 1KB. The code that we use in order to create this portal is located here in this GitHub repository. You can click to check and follow it and create your own Django application. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching this short video. We hope you enjoyed it and found it very useful for your company, so for your jobs. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the Daphne Create events. In this next demo, we actually will see Tareem pull together an awesome demo of what you can do with voice interactive automation these days. Uh, there are so many different technologies out there, so you can pick and choose which you, uh, you are most comfortable with. In this example, though, she's using Alexa to show how you could automate some day-to-day -day tasks or even some infrequent tasks to make it very easy to interface with and uh, execute at, at scale. Uh, and so throughout this, she's going to be interviewed by Rafat, who's going to help uh, explain just how this impacts her day-to-day -day job and how she can actually leverage this skill that she built for Alexa. Why don't we go ahead and check out that demo? Hi, everyone. My name is Rafat. I'm a systems architect here at Cisco. Hi, everyone. My name is Tehreem Tungekar, and I'm a solution support associate at Lumen Technologies. Our topic for today's demo is Alexa WebEx bot deployment. So Tani, can you tell us a little bit more about this project? What problems are we trying to solve with this? Sure. So often developers have these exciting and amazing ideas about creating bots. But the real struggle is when they have to go through different steps in order to get their bot up and running. So what we are trying to do here is we are trying to make this process easier by automating it. So by just giving one single voice command, developers would be able to deploy their bots. Wow. That sounds pretty exciting. Are we actually able to see this live in action today? Sure. So here I am in the Alexa developer console, and I'm going to command Alexa by saying, Alexa, ask my Lambda to deploy the bot. Take a look. Thanks. So while this build is running, let's take a look under the hood and see what's really going on here. So this is a user like you and I, and it's going to command Alexa by giving a single voice command. And once Alexa is invoked using this voice command, it's going to trigger an AWS Lambda function. Now, Lambda functions are serverless, so we are going to harness that service, serverless capability of AWS Lambda. And uh, that way, we don't need to pre-provision resources. They are going to be automatically created once the Lambda function is triggered. So in this case, our Lambda function is going to create a CI CD pipeline with the help of Circle CI. Now I have already put my uh, WebEx bots code in a GitHub repository. So Circle CI is going to pull that code from my GitHub repository, dockerize it using my Docker container, and then going to deploy it on Heroku. Now, once our app is up and running on Heroku, what we can do is try and test it in the WebEx Teams client. That sounds really exciting. I can't wait to see this in action today. Sure, but before that, let's see if our build was successful or not. So let's go to our Circle CI's dashboard and see if our build was successful. And yes, it was successful. Great. Now let's go to the Heroku app and yeah, our bot is up, which is great. Yeah, cool. Then I get the only step remaining is to actually verify that the bot is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So mm -hmm. we are here in our Teams app, uh, the WebEx app. And this is the part that we're going to be using for our testing. I'm just going to give it a few basic commands and see if this actually works. So I'm going to ask it to tell me a joke. And yeah, looks like it works. It's responding with a joke. I'm also going to ask it to create a room and see if it's able to do that. And yep, yeah, looks like that works as well. It's able to create a new room. So we'd just like to conclude by saying that the possibilities over here are unlimited. Like you could have your bot created to do the most of the amazing tasks. But as you guys already saw, the intent of our project was 
using a single voice command, we were able to do all of this deployment with no user intervention whatsoever. We hope this session has been informative. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Next up is probably the, my favorite part of the whole event, and that is recognizing you in the community for your efforts over the past year. Uh, this is the DevNet Creator Awards. And this is our fourth year giving these out, and it never gets old to me. Seeing all of you and what you're giving back to the community, whether it's helping host events and, and share your knowledge, whether it's just being supportive of people on social media, or actually going out and building code and building samples and sharing that back with people so they can actually try it out themselves and, and really grow themselves, grow their careers. Uh, it is just so heartwarming to see all of the efforts that you all put forward. And while I would love to recognize all of you, uh, we did have to go through all of the nominations and find some of the ones that really stood out as being exceptional, going that extra mile for the community. And so let's dive in and, and give those awards out right now. The first award we get to give out this year is to John Capobianco. A lot of you will know John, uh, he actually was part of uh, DevNet Create last year he participated, and he again this year is participating in the Start Now channel with Duan Lightfoot. Uh, but John has been so engaged as an advocate and a leader inside of the community. He's, he was a former instructor, he led and taught. Uh, it's very natural for him to help the community out and to help grow that skill set within the community. And we appreciate how much he's collaborated and connected with so many other people for the greater good of the community. Uh, John is well known here and appreciated for many of his code and automation exchange submissions where he is giving that code back and helping people out to see how he's done something and try it out themselves. Uh, and his just his general fun and thoughtful nature where he's always there to, to share an anecdote or, or have a good laugh. Uh, you'll find John across Twitter posting videos, blog posts, posting sample code, and even recently open sourced a tool that he built to help drive the community forward and help enable some technology and some capabilities that were otherwise missing in the community. John, thank you for everything that you've been doing for the, for the community. We're really looking forward to what you have in store for us next and to your continued support of the overall community with everything that you're putting out there. Next up, I want to recognize Shala, who a lot of you might know from social media as Gifted Lane. We heard loud and clear from you uh, inside the community that Shala's stories, her thoughtful nature, and the way she encourages others to discover and explore their own journey is inspiring. We're grateful to Shala for being such an engaged advocate and a leader in the community. She's out there all the time. I'm constantly seeing her on Twitter, sharing her thoughts, encouraging others to try new things, and helping people out when they're stuck on something. On the fun side, Shell has binged Korean drama since 2003, and she actually decided to learn the language so she wouldn't actually need subtitles when watching them. I love seeing that level of dedication, and I think it shows in all of the work that she does, including her support of the community. So Shala, thank you for sharing so much with the community, being such a great and inspirational leader, and we look forward to so much more from you in the future as well. Next up, I want to recognize David Masias. David is such an engaged advocate and a leader inside of our community. He takes time out of his already busy schedule to provide thoughtful guidance to everyone, especially in the contact center space. David does this in addition to actively promoting technology and programmability across his blogs, social media channels, and more. He's really helping make this shift in the industry and helping highlight to people the importance and the value of integrating technology together and using programmability to really streamline how we're working with that technology. We really appreciate all that David does on behalf of the DevNet community. David loves all things Contact Center and it's been his passion for his entire professional career. David lives in Charleston, South Carolina with his wife and their five-year-old son, and he enjoys the outdoors and you'll generally find them somewhere near water, either kayaking or playing in the sand. David, thank you for all that you've done for the community and especially for helping people find innovative ways to do new things in the contact center space and to automate their, uh, their bulk tasks when they're trying to get things done with contact center work. One more time, congratulations to all of the Creator Award winners. Thank you all for your contributions. Please, everyone, reach out to them, congratulate them on social media. If you know them, thank them next time you see them. It is so wonderful to be able to recognize all of your contributions. You've all done such a great thing for the community this past year. And again, thank you to everyone that was nominated, everyone that wasn't nominated, but is out there giving back to the community every day. 
We love seeing it. It is such an essential part of the success of this community to see people that are willing to share their knowledge, to share their ideas, to help support each other where, when they're struggling with something. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate all that you do to help keep the community thriving. And also thank you to all the demo jammers. Thank you for such great sharing such great bits of code. I love seeing it. I love seeing the innovation and just trying new things out. The whole idea of exploring technologies, even if it seems silly up front, it unlocks so many capabilities when you first just explore and try something out. And then you can actually leverage that for something that may be really impactful down the road. So don't shy away from just doing those fun little pet projects or those little creative things around the house because you never know when the skills you develop might actually come in useful or even just the code that you built might come in useful for something that you need to do at work or you need to do to help uh, someone in need. So thank you all for that as well. I appreciate you sharing it and look forward to another year worth of innovation ahead as we, as we head into 22 and beyond. So now what to do next? Well, I appreciate all of you that are out and active in the communities. I wanna make sure you continue to engage with us throughout the year. Obviously this event is a great opportunity to, to share information, but throughout the year, we're always active out on community.cisco.com. And I encourage you to all participate, come share your insights, answer questions, be part of that community. It's a great way to meet other people that are trying to do similar things to you and actually share your ideas. So great place to meet people when you're looking to just interact with peers. Uh, but then also uh, keep tuned into our blogs. We've got a great set of developer focused blogs on blogs.cisco.com slash developer, where you can actually watch and see what the latest technologies are that the team's playing around with, the developer advocates, and especially like trying new technologies out and documenting what, what they've found with it. But across Cisco, there's a lot of people that are working on developer interesting topics and they share that out on the blog. So it's a great place to stay in tune with what is on the cutting edge of things. Uh, and then lastly, keep an eye on our events. Well, this is our, our developer event for the year. We also do a ton of local events, regional events, virtual events, webinars, workshops, hands-on opportunities where we want you to come and get engaged and try things out and explore the technology uh, through, uh, through an interactive means. So please do keep an eye on all of those pages. Great opportunities to be part of the community, engage with us in an ongoing basis. And everyone you're gonna see over the course of this event, everyone from, uh, from our organization for the most part is fairly active on social media. So you can always track us down there too if you have questions or just wanna say hi. Now, what's in store for you the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the event? Um, so one cool thing I wanted to call out is, is our approach to content this year. So thank you everyone that submitted content. We had a ton of awesome submissions. But this year we really wanted to rotate towards something Cisco has been doing, which is we set out and we made an innovation promise to our customers. And we outlined a number of different ways in which we are gonna ensure our technology is always innovative. We're trying to push new boundaries, but we're also trying to do so in reasonable ways, in good ways. And so as part of that, we laid out this innovation promise. And I thought that was the best possible backdrop to approach this event this year with. And so when you're going through all the content, you'll see it all groups into these five different categories that came straight from our innovation promise and how we're trying to build better products. So we wanted to share that back with the community of how can you build better products? How can you build more innovative products? How can you build more secure products? And so when you're going through all the content, one, if one or more of these is of, is of interest, you can kind of search for those topics. But the ones that we talk about are customer and user experience. Obviously, if you're building any product, any solution, you want to make sure that it's very customer friendly. It's got it's easy to use. It is equally accessible. You want to make sure that it is very easy for all people to use, not just a set of people if, if it's not equally accessible. Uh, simplicity and cloud first. Obviously, everyone is driving towards the cloud and we are very supportive of that. We are working on that inside of our platforms as well, where we want everything to be cloud first. So you'll find lots of talks about cloud native technologies, ways of deploying things in the cloud and things to think about when you're working in the cloud. Next up is visibility and automation. You heard in the keynote already, full stack observability. Observability is so critical right now and it's on the top of everyone's mind because with so many businesses putting so many workloads in so many places, the information is, is very disjointed and it's very important to bring all of that together into business insights and business analytics and to overlay that with actual business metrics so you understand the implication of a website running slow or of a server going down. You wanna understand is that impacting your business or your application or something else? So that 
category is going to have all kinds of insights about how you can build uh, solutions that have good visibility and uh, actually can leverage automation to do some of those tasks. Next up, security built in. So this has been key to Cisco for a very long time. We've always focused on building our, our solutions with security in from the ground up. But now we're sharing a lot of that ideas and we've invited the community to do the same. Share, how exactly are you building security in, into your applications? I saw a number of talks uh, in the agenda that I'm really excited for, anywhere from uh, how to protect keys when they're in memory to how to actually automate and orchestrate security insights so that you can actually bring it together and act on it very quickly. So there's a great set of information out there that hopefully you'll find useful in that space. And lastly, interoperability and quality. So obviously when you're building applications, no application works in a vacuum anymore. You, it's important to make sure that it's very easy to interoperate with and it has a high quality and well-documented API so that when other people want to integrate with your applications, it makes it easy for them to consume and, and be a participant in that integration. All right, with that, I hope you have a great rest of your DevNet Create. I'm looking forward to a ton of great sessions ahead. We have four different channels that you hear, you'll hear about shortly from our hosts. And I look forward to hearing afterwards and during the event from you on social media, what are you liking? What, what ideas are you getting? And share with us what ideas you have going forward for what you can create and bring your APIs and apps to action.